What's good, YouTube? Masex back with another video. Big Will. I got Ross. Three lift of tears. What is this? His name the whole drink. <laughs> We're the three lift of tears, man. And of course, you know, I'll lead the way because I am the strongest of the three. How y'all doing today? Doing pretty good, man. Everything's been all good over here. Hope everybody's having a good day. Hope everybody's ready to talk some ball, man. Yeah, absolutely. What's up, Big Will? I'm good. Yeah, but hey, hey, y'all. Big Will is a committed man. He's actually on the move, moving states, and said, hey, man, I'm going to lock in, but I'm going to be in my car. Is that good? I said, come on. That's the love of football. So we're going to go ahead and get started, man. Continuing the series, looking at the predictions. We got the AFC, NFC. So we'll start off with the AFC West predictions. So we'll start things off with you, Will. See what your predictions are looking like. I'm pretty curious. All right. So I'm taking Kansas City number one, obviously. Number two, I'm going to take the Chargers. Number three, Raiders. And then number four, I'm taking the Broncos. Okay. So I don't, I'm not going to spend too many time, too much time on why Kansas City is number one. They're going for the three-peat, which I fully believe they can do. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, I definitely think they can do it. If any team can do it, they can. So I'm looking forward to really watching them this season. I think Patrick Mahomes could solidify himself as the greatest of all time with another win in the Super Bowl. So I got them number one. Number two, I got the Chargers. Mm, you know, I like okay. I like uh, you know Harbaugh coming over. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Justin Herbert does. Um, defensively, I want I want to see how their defense how their defense does. Number three, I, I kind of I think I think the L.A. Uh, are the not L.A. but the Las Vegas. I think their story their story is a little interesting because I just saw that you know uh, Minshew's uh, starting and O'Donnell's going to sit for right now, which is mm -hmm. kind of interesting because yeah. I think O'Donnell he played pretty good. You know, after Antonio Pierce took over, he played pretty good. Mm -hmm. O'Connell, so O'Connell, you know, he played really good after Antonio Pierce took over. And honestly, I think they're one of those teams that, I mean, I don't think they're going to do much this year, but I definitely think they're building towards something. In the future, so, okay. Yeah, you know, they still got Devontae Adams. You know, I, I don't know. I think I think they could be, you know, interesting this year. And then the Broncos, I don't, I don't see them doing much. You know, I think, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, I, you know, they were one of those teams that, you know, when Manning was there, they, you know, they were – one of the top teams, and ever since he left, they they really haven't had much. I mean, I know they experimented with you know Russell Wilson, that didn't work out. So Not at all. you know they they got Sean Payton as head coach, and I'm still I was always kind of questionable on him. Um, I know he had Breeze for the longest, and now we're seeing him without Breeze, and it's gonna be interesting. You know, I think this division, uh, you know, it's kind of sewn up. We know he's gonna win it. I, I I'm pretty confident that you know the the Chargers will be the second best team, but you know I think Vegas it'll be interesting. I think they're working more towards the future. I did want to say this. I want to say one more thing. I think, honestly, I'm not going to say I'm super high on him, but I'm rooting for him. I'm definitely rooting for him. I thought as a player, I liked him as a player, so I'm rooting for him. I think he could be a good coach. Well, damn near stole my thunder. We on the same page, so I don't really disagree with anything you said. That's, that's what I'm saying. This 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 division is pretty like – He's less really of a slam dunk, bro. Like, if anything happens – Now, after Kansas City, it can go either way. Yeah, Will's got the same exact order as I do. This is going to be a quest for nine straight division titles – I don't know exactly if that's something that uh, the Patriots did back during their heyday, their dynasty run, maybe. But then, um, you know, Kansas City, they just different. You know, it's, I think last year would have been the year to, like, really, like, slow them up because they come off on the slow start outside of Travis Kelsey. Who'd you have thrown on the ball? Now you got Rasheed Rice. If he can stay out of trouble, if he doesn't get any suspensions, you draft the fastest man in the world and um, Xavier Worthy. Yeah. Shout out to my boy Carson Steele, Indiana boy. He made the final 53. I know. Right down there, happy for him, man. Let's see what kind of impact Hell he yeah. made on the team. Piggyback off Will said, yo, if, if Patrick Mahomes can lead this team, you know, to three straight Super Bowls, winning three straight Super Bowls, and I think you can really make an argument. That's something he did if he can get it done this year that Brady couldn't do. Three straight Super Bowls? That's true. That's true. Oh, Los Angeles. Harbaugh, need I say more? You know, the man's turned around every program he's been a part of. You know, University of San Diego, Stanford, 
it was an absolute joke in football. It was an academic school for a reason. He came in there and he turned them around. Andrew Luck, oh, well, that was his head coach. And then he moved on to the league, San Francisco. He said, hey, I'm going to go ahead and take this team. If you guys remember the um, the Mike Singletary days, the Troy Smith days. Mike Singletary. Yeah, he were those days, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did that. He turned them around, got them to the Super Bowl, multiple NFC championship games. And then obviously recently with Michigan, the guy's a winner. He's but a winner. I can't wait to see what his dynamic is going to be with J- Justin Herbert. We all know that Harbaugh is a run and gun type of coach. He runs that ball, runs that ball. What do you have a receiver? You know, Lad McConkey out of Georgia. And then Quentin Johnson. Your is he boy, gonna... Lad McConkey. Lad your boy. McConkey, man, that's, that's my a. Hey. Lad McConkey, that's <laughs> that boy. Hey, that's an example of what can happen if you work hard. It won't nobody try to recruit that boy. Right. They look at the name and automatically dismiss him. Yeah, that's that not a bad. name that sounds like a football player at like, all. Yeah, coming in the third man, Las Vegas. The team bought in. The team believed. The team absolutely loves Antonio Pierce. I remember hearing about Max Crosby threatening to request a trade if they didn't bring him back full-time permanently. I remember that. Yeah, that was the type <laughs> of impact that he made as an interim that was, coach. That was love right there. Almost definitely. And when was the last time they actually retained an interim coach as the full-time head coach? Because it may have happened, but I don't remember it off the top of my head. Christian Wilkins coming in, a defensive tackle for the Miami Dolphins. As I mentioned before, you got Max Crosby. We'll see what this defense is going to be about. Quarterback, obviously, is going to be a huge question mark. I think quarterback is going to be what keeps them – from really making a huge dent in this division. And, absolutely. yeah, coming in last, man, I got the Broncos, you know, okay. Sean Payton. I think he's going to absolutely get the best he can out of Bo Nix, Bo Nix being a rookie. I think he's going to definitely um, slow play it. I don't expect him to make a lot of impact this year. That defense on the other side, like, who's the cornerback opposite of Patrick Sertan? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's going to be rough because, you know, when you have to um, dump Wilson, that was a lot of money. So you couldn't really afford much talent. So he's going to have to work with what he has. But, you know, everybody wants to discredit him in terms of, you know, what he had going on down in New Orleans with Drew Brees. But I really do think, like, if the uh, front office in Denver really exercise some patience with Sean Payton, because, you know, regardless of what you think about Sean Payton, I think he's going to – I think he, I think he deserves it because I think he's a, a damn good coach. And with someone like Bo Nix, who showed a lot of Oregon after leaving Auburn, I really do think that might mess around and be a – a nice marriage that uh, the NFL will get to know for years to come. My list is the exact same. So, oh man, I mean, this is proof. You know, the three of us we know KC Chargers because of Harbaugh, Raiders, and Broncos. Definitely that bottom two, uh, probably the consensus bottom two. If we're being honest, so yeah. yeah, no surprises there, man. Three for three, we all. That's the first time we all agreed on something. <laughs> that's what it feels like. From the AFC, we're going to go ahead and transition over to the NFC. Maybe things are a little bit different with our predictions, man. So, Just like the AFC West, man, NFC West, it's no surprise. I got the San Francisco 49ers coming in first. I got the Los Angeles Rams coming in second. I have the Arizona Cardinals coming in third. And then I have the Seattle Seahawks coming in fourth. Let's start up top and work our way down San Francisco. I mean, there's really not much that needs to be said here. You know, we got all the contract situations handled. They just extended Trent Williams today. Right. Got a nice little contract. Right. So they high- sure his hair was cut too in the fresh lineup on the Oh, you got yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Third highest paid tackle in the league. He still can go at 36. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I would just love to have Trent Williams as a bodyguard. I talk all kinds of trash to people. If I just had him on, by my side, man, that dude's a nasty dude. Yeah, I know that hurts as a Redskins slash Commanders fan, bro. Just having a generational tackle. Yeah. Leaving his prime. Yeah. I just hope when he gives his Hall of Fame speech in Canton, because you know he's going, that he mentions Washington. He doesn't forget where he came from. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, and then, you know, that's just the beauty of what you can do when you find a good quarterback on the cheap. I mean, mm-hmm. I, and I know it's going to be something down the line, like coming up, but I'm being intrigued, man. Don't be surprised if the, the Niners decide not to pay Brock Purdy. I think they ultimately will. I think they, they're they not going to pay mm-hmm. him, like, you know, buku dollars, but I also feel as though, like, hey, 
If I do really not good, pay Purdy. <laughs> I think if you got a quarterback who can get you to numerous NFC championship games, you just keep them. You but at the same to, time, man. though, do you really want to pay him? Of course you do, but you're not going to pay him. To, they'll, they'll figure it out. It's not going to be a, a one of them things where they dominate. I do think it's going to be a struggle. I think the Rams are going to be nipping at their heels. I think, you know, Sean McVay, he's not a coach that's here to rebuild. He wants to win now. Matthew Stafford, the clock's ticking on him. He looked really nice last year. You know, just stay healthy, man. You know, Kyron Williams, you got Puka Nakua, and you got Cooper Cup. And then Jordan Whittingham, man, rookie out of Texas. Let's see what he can do. And then coming in at number three, yeah, we're going to go with Arizona, man. And this one right here, this one is going to be very intriguing because Kyler Murray, he's he, – hey, he's saying it. Y- y'all keep sleeping on this. Y'all keep sleeping on us. You know, he came back, played very well last year, coming off the ACL injury that he suffered in 2022. And then, you know, he showed the front office and the coaching staff enough to where they didn't want to go get a quarterback like everybody was projecting. Projecting this time last year. They were, oh, yeah, they're going to they're gonna just tank. And, you know, they tried to tank. They know they wanted to, you know, put yeah, Ryan Dobbs Caleb, in there. They're going to replace him with Caleb Williams. I, I remember oh, that this time last year. Head coach Jonathan Gannon. He's really cooking up something on that defense. I look forward to seeing how that's handled. On the other side of the ball, you got Trey McBride, an up-and-coming tight end. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they mess around and win nine games this year and backdoor their way into that final wild card spot. Yeah, coming in at number four, Seattle <clears throat> Seahawks. And just because I got them finishing fourth, I do think traditionally, historically, this is probably one of the more competitive divisions dating back to the early 2010s. So just because I got the Seahawks finishing fourth doesn't mean they're going to go like 2-15. and 15. No, I, I think it'll be um, a hard-fought season. You know, some games just won't go in their direction. That's totally fine. You, know, you got, got offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb coming in to assist Coach McDonald, Mike McDonald, the former D.C. over in Baltimore coming in. And then you got the offensive coordinator just drive right down the street from the University of Washington. You know, a high flying offense, man. You got DK Metcalf, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. You're going to have Kenneth Walker, man. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do. I just think they're going to be one year away. It's going to be a competitive season. So, so how many wins do you, would you project Seahawks to get? Because you you named a lot of firepower right there. Exactly. Well, I just told you that. <laughs> yeah, I was I'm like, man, you compelled me. I forgot that you had them fourth for a second. Yeah, All the weapons they're, you were naming. Their their floor will be five games, but their uh, ceiling will be probably five, seven or eight. And you know what's what the quarterback situation? You got Geno. Maybe they maybe they figure out what they could have in Sam Howe. And is Gino really the quarterback that you want to lead your franchise for the long run? And if that is good for him. I mean, next year, 2025 will be the year that Seattle will go back to the um the beast mode team from the Pacific Northwest that they used to be. Because I do believe in Mike McDonald as a head coach for sure. I mean, I, I got you on that. I mean, for me, you know, I got the 49ers. Number one, I think we all probably have that. They're Super Bowl favorites for a reason, or at least Super Bowl contenders for a reason. I got the Seahawks number two. We definitely differ, man. And like you said, you know, all the the weapons they have on offense, they also have a good defense. So like their first round pick from 2023, Devin Witherspoon, they they got weapons on both sides of the ball. You know, Can't forget Tariq Woolen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's over on the other side. You know, Jaron Reed, first round pick this past year, Byron Murphy, who I had as the best three tech in this entire draft. So what's me. up with Byron Murphy? Is that is that 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 summertime shenanigans? Has that been put to bed or is that still I, a thing? I, yeah, that, that was kind of weird. I mean, <laughs> it was nothing legally it just came and gone on. so quick, and I was just like, My man is a trip, bro. That's like he must have fell asleep during the rookie symposium meetings if that's exactly what happened. <laughs> it's like you talked about with Ryan Grubb, man. They're, they're going to be throwing that ball. You know, three receiver sets. In the Carroll era period, they were one of the slowest-paced teams in all of the NFL. And now we speed things up and we let great players like DK and JSN, Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet, probably the best backup running back in the NFL. So, yeah, man, I got the 49ers, Seahawks. Number three, I got the Cardinals. And then last, I got the Rams, bro. I mean, I know, but Matt Stafford, bro. 
I really don't know if he's going to hold up this year. You know, if we're if we're being honest, the man's hobbled. He's he's one of my favorite. I think he's one of the more talented QBs. But they overachieved last year. They overachieved yeah. greatly, and yeah. I think they may come down to earth this overachieved? year. Overachieved? They overachieved. Yeah. They were, they, yeah. Nobody yeah. had them. He's one of the best coaches in the NFL. Yeah, but well, exactly. you can't say he exactly. overachieved. That's they terrible. they I'm overachieved, and I'm not the only one. Jango on me. Hold on for a second. We'll even give his takes. We'll be here all day. No, I just, I, but I agree with that. I do agree. I, I definitely agree. I wrote it, them off. I mean, I'll be honest. I wrote them off. Yeah, I, like they, they were not expected. They, they lost a lot over the years. And when they went all in for that Super Bowl, they yeah. lost a lot of talent, man. And I mean, we didn't even know if Aaron Donald was how much he was really into it. Oh, you know, nobody knew Puka Bowl. Nakua was going to be Puka Nakua. Cooper Cup, he's he's thirty one years old, somewhere around that. Injury riddle last year, and usually as you get older, you're not going to get any healthier at 31, 32 years old. old. They're too well coached of a team to come in fourth place, man. That's 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 crazy. Um, but hey, that's what preseason football predictions is all about. Hey, so we can true. revisit this in January, and I'll gladly say, Hey, you were right, man. I was wrong. But <clears throat> if you told me third, I said maybe, but fourth place, Ram, I, bro, place. they might mess around and sweep the Niners, look, bro. Look at their, their line. Like you said, the two Florida State boys, they're rookies, Braden Fisk, Jared Verse. Hey, hey, you feel me? So you're really young, bro. That's the one thing I was gonna say with you, Trey. It's like, bro, you said five wins for them, bro. Like, you think they're really gonna? No, I said their I said their floor is five wins. I said their ceiling is anywhere from seven to eight. Man, I I think ten. I think they could get eight to ten. I I kind of lean more. Very well could, but I think there's gonna be some teams in that division who have something to say about that. My list is is basically Mason's list. I mean, I got San Francisco. I had Seattle. That's why I was shocked you took Seattle last. I was like, bro, I don't know, man. Yeah. Hot take Seattle. Henry. I'm hot take Henry. Yeah, I took I took I took Seattle and then Cardinals and then the Rams because I feel the same way. The Rams to me overachieved, bro. I wrote them off, man. Like Stafford's been injured. Um, Aaron Donald, like you were talking about, every year, like the last like three seasons, it's been is he going to retire? You know what I'm saying? So when I feel like. When you start hearing that from a player, you kind of have to question if they're all in. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, Dafford, I mean, I just – I don't know, man. I've never really been super high on him. I think that that ring's obviously going to really propel no, his, you know, legacy, bro. Like, because I, before that, I mean, he was a good player. But like we were talking about with Seattle, bro, I, I got them winning at least 10 games. I think Geno Smith, I mean, yeah, he has his – you know, he's not – he's, he's kind of like what we've talked about with Kirk Cousins, all them. He's in that tier to me, like – He's better than average. He's going to keep the fans happy. He'll keep your your team winning. But they got weapons, though. That's the big difference. They got some good weapons, man. And they got a good defense. I had them going further last year, bro. I was shocked they you know, didn't go for So to put them at four, I was shocked. I was shocked yeah. to put them at four. Because, man, this is a stacked division, and I feel like with the new coaching well, staff that, coming bro? in. The Cardinals and the Rams? I don't, yeah, I don't think this is a stacked division. No, nah, man. I, yeah, I think this is a two-man. Some competitive team. How is it not a stacked division? You got the guys who I got coming in second, coming in fourth, and you guys got the guys coming in second. I got coming in fourth. That tells you that that's, that division's got a lot of parity to it. It's going to be pretty huge. Parity, but that don't mean it's stacked. It is yeah, stacked. This is like the most competitive division in the entire uh, league, unless you can find another one. And I can tell you if it's I'll like the it NFC up. East in the early just, 20s. Bro, I was about to just say that. Yeah, yeah. NFC East. Are you Remember just that? a couple years ago, man, you were well, winning the, divi- you were winning the division right after eight or nine games. You were winning the division. Right so now. it was parity, but it I mean, wasn't you could even say that You could even say the, NF- the NFC North, bro. I mean, that's going to be like – that's going to be competitive. That's no. competitive. No, no, no. And you're gonna have Green Bay or Detroit, and then you're gonna have Minnesota and Chicago kind of in the background a little bit, trying to make their way in the race. It, I Chicago I projected, yeah, yeah, I think they're gonna be pretty solid this year, bro. I, I, yeah, I do too. Now, Minnesota, I agree with you, but I think it's gonna be at least, yeah, they got they got three good teams, bro. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Byron Murphy's not even starting, and y'all even talk about the starter at the left defensive end position and Jaron Reed, oh, Bama boy, and. If y'all yeah, going to see I this team finish in second place, man, at least, you know, tell me about some of the, the starters, man. Yeah, I'll just talk about that. And, bro, we just talked about the AFC South as well. I mean, that could be 
somewhat competitive. Stop it. You stop. That's going to be a pillow fight. You said, you said NFC North. You said the NFC West, bro. That's, that's like, I, I don't think that's not. That's not. I don't think. Yeah, I think the South is more competitive. No. AFC South is yeah. more competitive. Bro. I don't that's think so, man. I don't think so because. Colts, Texans. We got the Jaguars, who a lot of people think are going to resurrect and come back. Yeah, it's like. NFC yeah, West. but you know what, though? They feel the same way about all these teams. They some people think the Cardinals might make the playoffs. Besides myself, and maybe the Seattle Seahawks could make the playoffs. But I do think the Rams, the Niners, and the Cardinals are going to be the three going in the playoffs, representing the NFC West and the Seattle Seahawks. And that's okay. Listen, if this was a year ahead of time, 2025, and y'all said the Seahawks might finish second, I could very well be the one saying that they're going to finish first. They got more younger players on rookie deals, and the San Francisco 49ers. They're going to end up having some big decisions to make here. In the second, you pan all these guys, and you still need to figure out what you're going to do with your quarterback, and that window's closing. So that's why I think that this is probably going to be the year that Seattle, uh, San Francisco, excuse me, is going to have to make some moves in terms of like making a run. They're 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 always as close to hoisting the Lombardi Trophy. They need to make it happen. Got um, to. But yeah, but you respectfully, you know, guess we'll just agree to disagree. But I look forward to seeing the Rams finishing fourth. Is crazy, man. Sean McVay is too good of a coach to let that happen, man. I think Stafford has another year or two left in him. I remember last year I told Mason, I was like, bro, I think 2023 might be Stafford's last year because he was always hurt. He he wasn't right. And then he came back and made that run in the playoffs. And they very well could have beaten Detroit. That's true. Yeah, that's true. It was a close one. but That was was last year, though. I just don't see a finish of four this year. Hey, hey, man, I'll tell you what. We'll just agree to disagree. I can't wait to see. Right. What were you saying, wait. Will? Can't wait to see I, it. I mean, I was going to say with, with San Francisco, I feel like when they lost to the Eagles that year and then last year, I mean, it's like, bro, they ran out. They they lost. They, you know, lost because of obviously an injury to Purdy. And then they lost to the, right. the Chiefs. I don't know, man. If it wasn't for that stuff, they could have they could at least got one. Nah, I, I just think it's it comes down to Kyle Shanahan, you know, knowing when to be aggressive and when not to be aggressive because – He's had double digit leads in these Super Bowls all the time, and he just manages to let him slip away. He's a good coach, but he's always getting out dueled and out coached versus Andy Reid. Like, he didn't even know, he, he didn't even like coach his players up know the rules of the Super Bowl overtime format. I don't know if you remember seeing like clips. Yeah, of I remember. Oh, wait, that. we get the ball back if they score? Yeah, like, I think sometimes, and then obviously everybody talks 28 3. Kyle Shanahan's fingerprints are all over that one. Like, that's his no, issue. Bro. The Falcons, yeah, because yeah. he was their OC that but, year. But bro, OC. but look who he's going against, though. You got to consider the two. Doesn't matter. Mahomes Doesn't matter. Doesn't Tom matter, Brady, bro. Bro, bro the, if they was paying Benny, he's playing. They would have blew him out. It doesn't matter who you playing when you win on twenty. Yeah, bro, he's talking about the two greatest quarterbacks of all time, man. Come on, you can't. If you're up 28 Bro. to 3, you need to really learn how to start coaching conservatively. Run the ball, melt the clock. You'd have a ring with Atlanta. Uh, know when you got. Patrick Mahomes down by double digits in the second half of the uh, first matchup in the Super Bowl. You got to kind of know when to, you know, t- put your foot on the neck. Stop being, you know what I'm saying? And last great, year, great. Can I they have double digits question? in the Super Bowl, man. Kyle Shanahan should have three rings right now, man. One great. with the Falcons and two with the Niners. Can I ask you a real question? Make it quick, man. I got to go to bed. What, what, do you, what do you think would have happened? What do you think would have happened with Atlanta if he was playing Peyton Manning? You think, you think Peyton Manning would have came back on him? Anybody would have came back on him if he kept no, trying to throw the ball. Golly, he kept he gave the Brady he gave the Brady's he gave the Brady's an opportunity to come back. So disrespectful. Football, let's be honest. It's Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, man. Anybody else, they would have melted down themselves. They would have mentally, but they would have mentally been out of it. Just you like do know Seattle that was. these guys on the opposite end of the field from Peyton Manning and Tom Brady are NFL players too. And Kyle Shanahan is one of the best coaches ever. He's proven that at this point. He just needs to finish. That's all he needs to do. No, if I said, if I said, okay, you're down 28-3, what quarterback do you want to lead your team, Peyton Manning or Tom Brady? No, 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 no. Will, I'm not, I'm not talking about who the quarterback is in these situations. I'm talking about if I'm Kyle Shanahan and I have a 28-3 lead in the Super Bowl, I'm not throwing the ball. I'm going to be a but conservative think, but coach. But you know what, bro? you got to consider this, too. Think about Devontae when Pete Carroll ran. Freeman should have had the ball so much more than what he did when they were but up But think about this, bro. Think about this. Because I, you get what I'm saying? No, well, I do not get what you're saying. Kyle <laughs> Freeman's a good coach, but he needs to, he, he needs to know <sighs> when to control a lead in the Super Bowl. Every time he's been in the Super Bowl, he's been up double digits. 
and he let it slip out of his no, fingers. I, I mean, I'm saying, well, I'm saying the first time the, with the Atlanta, that would have been. I think that would have been Atlanta, okay. so San Francisco if, if, in if, 2019, if, uh, San Francisco in 23. So being, being, being if you're being honest, if you're being honest, if Pete Carroll throws the ball and Russell completes it, are we not going to sit there and say, man, Pete Carroll's one of the greatest coach just for reasons like that? Instead of running the ball, he threw it. Nobody else would have did that, but he took that risk, threw it, completed it. We would have been like, bro, he's a genius. Nah, because you know it works both ways, man. You know that, bro. You- I'll tell you what, though. I do look forward to the end of the season. I'm going to keep my eyes glued to those standings because I think you guys saying the Rams finishing last place is absolutely absurd. You tell me third place and they just have a downslide because Stafford just can't go no more and Stetson Bennett's in there for whatever reason and he can't go and then they – okay, fine. I'm I, I don't know that I'm wrong, but I fourth fourth place with the roster they have right now. Yeah, bro. Well, all right. I guess we all three had some opinions with the NFC West, not as cohesive, but that makes it that's what makes it fun. And like Ross, you said, what mid January we can come back and revisit this, which best believe I will have the receipt on this when I'm right and you're wrong. No, I'll come back later and debate with Will about how you know. If you got no, a double I'm, I'm just leading the training. Super Bowl, what? That work with anymore? He's not on. It. Well, get that bum out of here so I can get some 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 folks up north up on here, man. <laughs> I got DC radio. It's I love to join this podcast, Ross, because you on there be calling in the radios. I gotta let Will listen to some of these radio bits. I be calling in the radio. I'm like, yeah, man, here's my opinions. I be calling, be sharp with the tongue. Like, yeah, let's go, baby. Ross and Tampa. That's what they call me, Ross and Tampa. All right. Well, if you made it this far in the video, deeply appreciate it. If you haven't already, definitely like and subscribe to this video, man. We got more videos to come. So if you're a football fan like me, definitely this is the right channel to be a part of. Big Will, Ross Master, appreciate you guys stopping by. And I guess we'll see y'all in the next video. Bye, guys. This is fun. Bye. Come on, bro. You're waving. I'm waving. Cheat. <laughs> <laughs>